Okay, I've got all uh, four tires mounted up, and I went ahead and, and gave the, the alloy wheels a nice cleaning. And now it's time to balance them before putting them on the car. Here's my Saab, and you can see down there there's the, the winter uh, wheels and tires. So let's get started. You'll notice that I line the red dot up with the valve stem. On alloy wheels, if you allow, if you align the uh, red dot with the valve stem before you ever even start to balance the wheel, that gives you your best uh, starting point as far as uh, the wheel and the tire being in balance together. Now it's. Um, I believe it's the opposite on tires that are mounted on steel wheels. And you can find that information easily uh, online as far as there's sometimes there's white dots and yellow dots as well on the tire. But that information is readily available, a uh, quick search on the internet. But it, anyways, as far as uh, alloy wheels, red dot, line it up with the valve stem. Now here's the weights that I, I took off from the wheels when I did my mounting and remounting of the tires. So this is the in entire amount of, of uh, weights and these are the hammer-on weights and I'm not going to to go with those I'm going to go with the uh, stick-on weights that I like to use. So here's the stick-on weights I've used these previously and what I like to do uh, when I do the balancing rather than having weights on on both sides of the wheel on these alloy wheels, I like to go ahead and and put them right here, uh, just inside the exposed uh, part of the wheel, which is a little bit toward the outside, but it's kind of like having the center weight. It's just my preference. What you do, I find that <clears throat> this brake uh, brake clean really works nicely. You just you. Uh, spray it on a rag and then rub the area once you know where you're going to uh, place the weight you can clean that area nicely and then uh, that way you'll be sure that the, the weights will stay stuck in place and not be thrown off as you're driving. Now I've used this uh, portable uh, wheel balancer that I bought a few years ago uh, bubble balance. I've used it previously And here we are. Now these could be found um, readily online, different versions of the same thing. Uh, they've got them on eBay and Amazon and um, I believe Harbor Freight has them right in the in the store as well. You've got your instructions. But I think they're all pretty similar each other and here it is uh, easy to set up and so we'll do that now if you've watched my previous videos I uh, uh, the first one was I uh, mounted the new uh, Harbor Freight to manual tire changers before and then I had another video where I uh, did my first time use of the machine the mounting the tires, the summer tires for my saw, and now a third video in that series. I'm going to do the manual bubble balance. Now, just a, a couple things to mention on that. In my opinion, if you're going to be uh, driving your car frequently at higher speeds, then you really should do the dynamic uh, balance, which is the computer balance, um, which is a balance based on the tire actually. Uh, rotating, and that'll give you a more accurate uh, balance. Now, the old bubble balancing was used for years, uh, years ago. It was, in fact, it was the only way that shops did it was with the ba bubble balance, and um, it was adequate in most cases. And uh, that's what I'm going to use on my my sod wheels here. But that's just kind of a disclaimer, in my opinion. Get a more precise balance, especially at those higher speeds. 
that the dynamic uh, spin balance is needed, which of course uh, is not a do-it-yourself thing unless you own the shop and have a, a machine. So you'll have to take it somewhere and, and have it done. Well, let's go ahead now and, and uh, we'll do uh, one, of my, one of my wheels here just to show you how I go about uh, using this bubble balancer. Now there's the bubble balancer. I didn't bore you with the setup. It's very, uh, very straightforward, simple. The main thing is find a nice, stable, level place on your floor, and then there's the three screws here where you adjust to get the bubble right in the center of the red circle there. Once you've got your bubble in that center, you check it and spin it around in that, and it should come right back to the center there. You may have to uh, tweak it a few times, but that's your starting point. Now I've found, for whatever reason, you know these all these are made in China and they're kind of cheap. Um, I decided to index it, that's north, and um, the reason for that is I've found as this spins in different positions, then the, the bubble's not uh, completely centered, so I index it, and then I'll, I'll keep using that same alignment when I'm putting my wheel on here and taking it off. And that'll give me a consistent basis for understanding where I need the weight on the wheel. Now the the cone is spring loaded, and I find that I'll put it on and off a few times just to make sure it's centered on the cone. Make sure you're getting an accurate reading. Uh, I've seen some people like lube it all up, uh, lube the cone up, both where it goes up and down, and also where the where the wheel sets on the cone just to make sure everything's moving freely and getting accurate reading but <clears throat> it can be a little messy so I find I just like to kind of double check it pick it back up put it back on a couple times and see if I can get a consistent bubble reading now <clears throat> excuse me this first one works out very nice this one when I mounted the tire I got the red dot pretty close to the valve stem there and lo and behold the bubble is perfectly centered so that makes my job a little easier I don't have to put any any weight at all on this wheel so we'll move to the next wheel so I can show you how I go about uh, marking and putting the weight on the wheel <laughs> well here we go again wheel number two where I was able when I mounted it which can be a little tricky sometimes by hand I, I got the the red dot pretty close to the valve stem. And again, I don't know if that'll focus if you can see that, but the bubble's right in the middle. So no weight again needed. Uh, while I have this one on here, I would mention though, I mentioned how I line my machine up, I mean the with the marker for north. I also like to put when I'm putting the tire onto the machine. I'll line the, the valve stem up with that too for reference uh, to, to the north too in the same direction and this way because you end up uh, taking the wheel on and off to, to double check it and uh, perhaps after you, you might have to take it off to put your weights on especially if you're hammering the weights on uh, you may want to take it off the machine so as not to damage the machine and give you a more stable surface uh, with these tape on weights I can probably go right ahead and uh, tape them on here without taking the tire off the machine, but I would still pick it back up and put it back on just to double check everything. But anyways, there we go. So far, the, these first two wheels are perfectly balanced according to this bubble balancer, and so I'll make a mental note of that because these two would be good one, a good candidate. You know, your your uh, tires and wheels that take the least amount of weight to balance. It's nice to put them on the front of the car because that's uh, most sensitive uh, when you're driving to 
out of balance wheels. So I'm going to put uh, these first two on the front of the car. So now the next two uh, wheels, I know I didn't get the red dot exactly uh, at the valve stem. So let's see if, if those will need some weight. Okay, we're on wheel number three here. And again, I don't know how well my camera here will focus, but although the bubble on this one now, the other ones, the bubble is perfectly in the center of the red circle. So although the bubble is still within the red circle here, uh, it is slightly out. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and put some weight on it um, so we can, we can show you that. Um, I guess theoretically, if you're within the red circle, you could consider it uh, fairly well balanced to begin with. But let's go ahead and see if we can narrow this down more precisely. Now these come in longer strips. These are this is a previous strip that was cut when I had balanced other wheels, where I've got um, six pieces of a quarter ounce, one and a half ounces, and so I'm just using this kind of slide it in position around the rim a little bit and watch my bubble and I found that right about here just about perfectly does it but it, it looks like it just needs a tad just a tad more weight so I'm I'm thinking seven quarter ounce pieces now with the the backing for the stick you just take a razor blade and cut along the seam easy enough so I'm going to I'm going to take another full strip and just cut one with a seven and then double check it so looking in the back one two three four five six seven pieces so I'm going to cut right here with my razor blade so I'm pretty happy with the one and three quarter ounces right here so I've got a yellow mar marker. I can mark this and I'm going to clean my spot on the inner wheel here and then lay the, the weights right there. There you go. So now we're going to put it back on our machine and double check it. I'm going to call that good. So there's tire number three. Okay, wheel number four. You notice this is the one I uh, had the red dot the furthest away from the valve stem. And this one really, it was in the center. And if I was being lazy, I just could have let it go because it was, it was pretty centered. But uh, the bubble was just a, uh, a hair off within the center. And so I experimented a little bit, and I found that three quarters of an ounce right here will do it. So I'll mark that with my yellow uh, crayon and do the same procedure I did in the other one, and we'll be done with that. So I'm really uh, satisfied with that, finding out that all total, uh, the front wheels, both of the front wheels, didn't need any weight at all. And then the one uh, rear wheel, one and three quarters ounces, and then this one, three quarters of an ounce. So that's uh, two and a half ounces of weight. I'm really satisfied then with these uh, with these tires. So now I'm going to put them on the car, and we'll see how it acts on the highway. When I get a chance to go on a road trip. So there we go. Here we go. Just lined it up with my yellow crayon and put the three quarters of an ounce right there. So there we go. There's the last one. Dead center. All balanced and ready to go. We're looking good. I'm, I'm real happy with that. It's a shot of the car with the winter wheels and snow tires on it. A little tip for uh, the northern areas. Over the years I've found 
so often these alloy wheels the steel ones won't but the alloy wheels you will seize on the, the hub here um, if they're on for a while and they can be a bear to get off you've got to end up um, taking a big five pound hammer and hitting the back of the wheel or, or something to get it off and you risk damaging the wheel bearing so nice easy preventative that will never seize right on the hub so there's the winter wheels I'll clean them up nice before I put them into storage okay there she is with the summer wheels it's a lot better